What's this? No. It's a book about pirates with a treasure map. No, I don't think so. I wish that I had seen through all your lies. Oh, start from the beginning, not the middle. And so I decided to pick up my pen to relate the most disturbing episode of my life thus far. It all began early one morning in 1898 when Sherlock Holmes invited me to accompany him on a visit to the Marquis of Conningham. Watson, my dear fellow, we can now go and inform the Marquis that we have found the Samoan necklace and very much faster than Inspector Baines too, which pleases me. Have you really solved the theft, Holmes? And so quickly? I have indeed, Watson. And believe me, it was completely unnecessary to spread out all over London, as our friend Baines thought was best. He likes to boast that his methods are equal to mine, but once again the outcome has contradicted him. After all these years of accompanying you upon your investigations, I thought that by now I should be reasonably capable of following your train of thought. But in this particular case, I must admit that I don't understand anything at all. Ah, you see, but you do not observe, Watson. There lies the difference. It is a matter of course. A matter of course? In the middle of the night, when everyone is fast asleep, the service bell within that room rings out and alerts the servants. They dress quickly and come running. But the door is locked and there is a strong smell of burning from within. A few seconds later, the master of the house himself, the robbed Marchioness's husband, the Marquis of Conningham, arrives and unlocks the door using the sole key. A fire has started inside the room, but they have managed to arrive in time to put it out. It is at that moment that the Marquis realizes that the famous Samoan necklace, which had been safe within its glass cabinet only a few hours earlier, has now disappeared. In order to explain, let us confirm my theory before the arrival of Inspector Baines. This window was cut with a diamond, a clean, discreet piece of work. This is where the necklace was. See how tiny the hole is, and not one fingerprint upon the window. A mark undoubtedly made by a diamond. Someone tried to cut the glass, but he was interrupted. Therefore, the thief tried to escape through the window, but he was interrupted. All the windows are locked. They've not been forced. Let us examine the crumpled scores that have fallen off the piano. Nothing of interest here. 
These sooty prints were left by a tiny hand. I don't understand why these music scores are covered with soot. This window was cut with a diamond, a clean, discreet piece of work. This is where the necklace was. See how tiny the hole is, and not one fingerprint upon the window. This draft screen makes an ideal hiding place. As the theft was committed at night, I conclude that the thief hid himself behind the draft screen and waited until he was alone in the room. Strange, there aren't any prints, yet I'm sure that the thief hid here. Not very well kept, this aquarium. I can see a dead fish floating on the surface. A candle. It must have fallen from the chandelier. These documents are not very interesting, even though they're addressed to the Minister of Maritime Affairs. The Marquis himself! Footprints! You are not going to get on your knees to examine them. There is no need. It is soot. The servants must have trodden in it while they were putting out the fire. Heading towards his chosen escape route, probably the window, the thief knocked over the stool, which then caught fire. But why didn't he try to put the fire out at once? Strange. There are some objects here that have been knocked over. The fire started here, just beneath the bell pull. Whoever pulled the cord would have had his feet in the fire, unless it was pulled before the fire started. The chest wasn't opened. The necklace wasn't in it. All the windows are locked. They've not been forced. When the servants arrived at the door, having been alerted by the bell, they saw evidence of the theft and the fire, but they didn't see the thief. This door is very hard to force. The Marquis is the only person to have the key. The thief could not get out through here until eventually when the door was opened by the servants. Ah, Mr. Holmes, you're already here. Good morning, Inspector. You've arrived just in time. <laughs> Scotland Yard arrives like the cavalry, always in the nick of time. Ah, but I know that satisfied expression, Mr. Holmes. Have you already solved the case? It's possible. We have retraced the thief's rather unusual footsteps. He is a true acrobat. But what I cannot understand is that when the servants entered the room, there was no one to be seen. An acrobat, perhaps, but an invisible one? <laughs> I do not think so. The only explanation is that the thief escaped before the servants arrived. I don't know how, but there is no other way. Half a point for the doctor, nil for the inspector. I am pleased to see that you find this. Marquis, here is your necklace, intact, just a little wet. Mr. Holmes, this brilliant demonstration does credit to your reputation. Well, thank you so much, Marquis. Do you wish to verify the authenticity of your jewel? No, I recognize it. I have spent many hours admiring it, you know. Good. I will return it to its box and... Inspector! A bank has just been held up! You must follow me at once! Orders of Scotland Yard! What times? Sirs, duty calls. My regards, Marquis. And well done again, Mr. Holmes. There, the necklace is in its box. We've lost enough time here. Let's go home, Watson. Ah, very well, as you wish. A good day to you, Marquis.
With pleasure, gentlemen. And once again, thank you. This morning's newspaper. Holmes, have you read this article about you? No, Watson, not yet, and I won't have time to. Read it before you leave. It's outrageous. If you insist.
Prince Woodville, French culinary expert and bagpipe player, might be our next king. That's not so shocking, my dear fellow. You know exactly to which article I'm referring, Holmes. How can Farley dare to tarnish your reputation like that? You know, Watson, that wherever glory walks, jealousy is bound to follow. As for the forgery of the necklace, I suspect that we shall soon be enlightened in this regard. Come in, Inspector Baines. The door's open. Ah, Mr. Holmes. How did you know I was here? You are one of our rare visitors who avoids the second-to-last step of the stairs, which creaks dreadfully. And if I add the clinking of the handcuffs at your belt, to what do we owe the pleasure of your visit, Inspector? Have you read that, Rack? Inspector, can you explain this slander? Has the necklace of the Samoas really been replaced by a fake? I don't know how the reporter got hold of the information, but it's true. About the necklace, of course. I wouldn't permit myself to question the integrity and honesty of Mr. Holmes. The necklace is a forgery? Impossible! I saw the Marquis authenticated before my very eyes, before Holmes returned it to its place. Mr. Holmes, the Marquis believes Osmond Farley's theory. I shouldn't be surprised if the reporter isn't behind all this slander about you. He's a freelancer, well known for his explosive and subjective articles. In any case, the Marquis assures us that you were the last person to have the necklace in your hands. Let's return to the Marquis's house, Holmes. I'm sure that we'll have no trouble in taking apart this theory. It is unnecessary. Such allegations collapse on their own, like one of Mrs. Hudson's souffles. Let us leave the police to solve this problem and turn our attention to the matters in hand. Perhaps you are right, Holmes. Inspector, I assume that you have the fake necklace with you. It's why you're here. Your superiors would like me to examine it. Indeed. They would like you to confirm or deny putting this fake in the box. Can't that wait? I must go to the house of Lord Peregrine Maitland, the Bishop of Knightsbridge. And the Marchioness? She is beside herself. Without the necklace, her marriage is compromised. It is the principal item of the young woman's dowry. What a lovely marriage! Holmes, forgive me for insisting, but don't you want to examine the fake jewellery? Watson, I have an appointment, and it's out of the question that I arrive late. It will only take you a couple of minutes. You really must quell the suspicions put forward in this appalling article. If you will allow me, Inspector? Be my guest. Very well. These three pearls are of poor quality. This pearl is a different color. This pearl is too small. It is not in its place here. Too many defects. This necklace is a fake. This is nothing but a vulgar copy, and at a glance it would appear that the forger has intended for it to be seen as such. How could we have been fooled by such a blatant imitation? I don't understand. Yes, how is it possible? Holmes, do you have a theory about this? I have absolutely no idea. You insisted that I examine the necklace, and I have done so. Now it is important that I keep my appointment. I'm sure, Inspector, that you will throw some light on this affair. Holmes. You may accompany me, Watson, if you care to do so. Goodbye, gentlemen. I'll keep you informed as to my inquiries. Goodbye, Inspector. You mentioned a bishop, didn't you? Are we going to his home? Yes, the Bishop of Knightsbridge. I put his address on our map of London on my desk. Would you get it for me, please? All right, Holmes. Holmes's homemade analyzer. The work table, where Holmes analyzes things. I have found your map. The police? Already? How did you know? May we see the Bishop of Knightsbridge? Yes. Yes, of course. But come in. What has happened, Reverend? What? I... I don't know. It was last night, I think. I only just arrived. 
and I have made this macabre discovery. My god, how horrible. I haven't called anyone, how did you know that? Holmes, look! The bishop, appallingly mutilated. How dreadful. Mutilated and killed. He was such a good man. How could anyone be so brutal? Look at him. He is barely recognizable now. How could any of God's children be responsible for that? They were evidently unworthy children, Reverend. Now do please try to calm yourself and focus, because we will need your assistance. Do you have any idea as to the motive behind this? I haven't had time to do an inventory, but nothing appears to have been stolen. And anyway, His Excellency didn't own anything of great value. I don't know what else I can tell you. Note this down, please, Doctor. Doctor? But you aren't the police? No, Reverend. I am Sherlock Holmes, and this is Dr. Watson. We are here at the request of the Bishop. In that case, I must ask you to leave, and not to touch anything. I must get in touch with the authorities without further delay. Uh, Reverend, when the inspectors of Scotland Yard find themselves at a dead end, which they quite often do, I assure you, then they turn to me for help. If you will allow us to continue our investigation, then you shall have the answers to all of your questions. Out of the question! I don't even know you! I'm going to call the police, whether you like it or not. It would be better for everyone, Reverend, if you kept your temper. Watson, are you taking notes? This affair promises to be a complex one, therefore we must not overlook the slightest detail. Yes, Holmes, I am keeping a meticulous set of notes. I have created a very clever deduction board. One thing we can be sure of at the moment is that this crime was not for gain. The Reverend has informed us that nothing valuable was stolen, and indeed it would seem that the Bishop had nothing of any worth to take. Very good, Watson. Do continue. This stove is filled to overflowing. A broken phial and blood near the neck. What a strange smell. Phew, chemical components, I think. A broken bottle of whiskey. However, the Bishop of Knightsbridge was known for his sobriety. The fingers have been crushed and violently struck. His forearms have been ripped. Pieces of skin have been torn off. What do you think, Watson? I'd say that he was eaten alive. Yet I've noticed a curious degeneration of the skin tissue around the wounds. The fingers have been crushed and violently struck. A piece of rope, it was used to tie up that poor man. His stomach is covered in scratches. Quite evidently, they weren't made recently. So, these wounds were not made by his murderers. You can see by his expression that he suffered terribly. His mouth is covered in blood and I can make out strips of skin between his teeth. My dear friend, everything points to this man having gnawed at his own forearms. That's unbelievable, Holmes. His chest has been lacerated, I would say, with a very sharp and fine blade. Finger. Apparently, it doesn't belong to the Bishop of Knightsbridge. How dreadful! These burns are terrible. This poor man was tied just below the knees. To stop him from walking, sir. His feet have been burned. Hmm. My first impression is that he wears a size 9 shoe. You? But what does it matter, Holmes? My 
God, Holmes, this man was horribly tortured. Something is missing here. Oh, yes? And what might that be? His shoes. Watson, his shoes are missing. A bottle of whiskey. I can make out fingerprints stained with blood and dirt. It would seem that the brutes who tortured the bishop to death were intoxicated with alcohol. There is blood on this paperweight. This paperweight was used to crush the victim's fingers. The picture of Peregrine Maitland, commander of the infantry brigade of Her Majesty's guards at Waterloo. The Bishop of Knightsbridge has the same name as his ancestor, an illustrious family. A whip? No, it is a discipline for self-flagellation. This metal rod is for fastening the chillis. It's a silice designed to bruise the person wearing it. The bishop wore it as repentance. This very pious man must have had the habit of mortifying his flesh as a means of repentance. This door has not been forced. Where does it lead, Reverend? To His Excellency's room. There is just a mattress and a stool. The bishop's bedroom. It is very austere. Nothing in particular here. Closed. The veranda door hasn't been forced. Strange. Reverend, might I have the key? No! You have no authority here. Let me call the police. Perhaps we should listen to him, Holmes. Perhaps you should let me get on with this, Watson. surgical scalpel covered in blood. There isn't any doubt the wounds on the bishop were administered with this scalpel. Impossible to open it. I need something. Reverend, I'm missing something, an implement with which to open this chest. Could you tell me where to find it? No! Go to the devil! What are you afraid of, Reverend? What is inside the chest? I'm not afraid of anything. In fact, I do have the necessary implements, but if I have to give them to anyone, it will be to a representative of the law and no one else. Watch where you're putting your feet, Watson. Have you noticed these prints upon the ground? Well, yes, those muddy marks. See here, Watson, footprints can often provide more vital information than the very best of informants. Yes, if you know how to make them talk, that is. It's child's play, Watson. We will begin by excluding the contaminating prints, which are yours and mine from where we came in, and those of our dear Reverend, who was so impatient to call the police. Hobnail boots like those worn by laborers. This print came from an expensive pair of shoes, and it seems recent. It is not a laborer's shoe. A fragment of stone. Peculiar. Well-worn shoes with an odd pattern on the soles. Hobnail boots like those worn by laborers. Hobnail boots like those worn by laborers. Hobnail boots like those worn by laborers. Nothing of interest here. Size nine. Size nine and a half. Size nine. Size nine. Size nine. 
size nine and a half. Perfect. We now know that there were three crooks. Strange but true. One of the crooks was wearing a different pair of shoes when he left here. Therefore we have three men who came in and left again. But one of them was wearing a different pair of shoes from the ones which he came in with. So, all we have to do is look for a workman who likes Italian shoes. It is evident that the Bishop of Knightsbridge's killers were after something specific, and that they did not find it. Reverend, I shall ask you one more time. Open the chest. The item they were seeking must still be inside. It is unlikely that they will let this matter rest. They will most certainly return to finish what they started. And I am telling you once more, the chest is locked and shall remain so. Very well. We have reached an impasse. You are a stubborn man, Reverend. Watson, accompany our friend to the police station and return with Inspector Baines. Baines and no one else. I shall wait for you here. Go. Alone at last. Now I can continue my investigation. This lock should be easy to pick. Let's see. There we are. It is simplicity itself. There isn't anything much in this room. It must be used as a reading or meditation room. An ink stain, quite fresh. This stain is just on the edge of the rug. Let's see. There is nothing on the floor, yet the ink must have soaked through the rug. This inkwell was tipped over recently. An ink stain. The ink stain on the floor comes from the ink on the rug, but they are not in the same place. Someone has moved the rug recently. That is curious. There is something strange on the floor. Certain stones have been marked out, just like a chessboard. Apparently, someone wanted to hide this statue. This horse resembles a large chess piece. There is a message underneath this statue. Let's see. This message was written by a woman, but for whom was it intended? Interesting, this chess game.
This last piece should be the good one. It will have to be pulled free. I need something. packet of letters addressed to the Reverend. They were written by a woman who mentions his illegitimate children. Their affair isn't official. Perfect. I have you now, my wayward Reverend. Watson, you were gone a terribly long time, and Inspector Baines isn't with you? I'm afraid not, Holmes. We were unable to find him. Dr. Watson would not allow me to contact any inspector other than this Baines. What manners! I am a man of the church. My dear Reverend, I notice that you are a chess lover. I trust you will excuse me, but I am never able to resist the appeal of a half-finished game. You are an expert at chess. Very well, then. What do you want now? As you might have guessed, resolving your small chess problem has allowed me to discover some very interesting letters. Letters? What do they say? Reverend, why hide these letters here and run the risk of the bishop finding them? Holmes, what's in the letters? Not now, Watson. Where else could I have hidden them? My own chambers are too austere. They could offer no cover. I knew, however, that His Excellency, may he rest in peace, would not notice my game. The contents of the Bishop of Knightsbridge's chest interest me greatly. Give me the elements you hold, Reverend. Out of the question. I am a gentleman, and it would distress me to be obliged to pass this correspondence across to your superiors. Holmes, I know that the end justifies the means, but allow me to express some reservations about how you are proceeding. You say you're a gentleman, but I hear nothing but the words of a blackmailer. The stems that you are looking for are scattered about this room. Manage by yourself. These traces reveal that the thieves tried to open this chest. Thank you. 
You have won. Evidently, as I always do. What are you able to tell us about the Bishop of Knightsbridge's last days? Did anyone come to visit him? Did he seem worried, anxious? Do not omit the smallest detail. His nephew came to see him yesterday at His Excellency's request. I found this visit a little peculiar because the young man rarely visits his uncle. Do you know why that might be? Were they on bad terms? I don't think so. It's rather a consequence of his work. The young man is employed within the archive section of the Royal Library, which doesn't leave him with a lot of free time. Do you know the reason for his summons? No, but the conversation was very heated. It only lasted for a few minutes and ended with the nephew in a terrible rage. Interesting. I've answered your questions. Will you now let me contact the authorities? I'm afraid not, Reverend. Not just yet. All right, now we can open the safe. Now I can open the chest. Here we are. I am eager to discover what remarkable treasure could justify such an act of barbarity. Extraordinary! This chest is impenetrable. How is it possible? No one other than the bishop should be able to open it. You open the chest with disconcerting ease, Holmes. I've seen and heard quite enough. This time you won't stop me. Catch him, Watson. What the... But why? Run, Watson. Hurry. He's escaped. I hope that your motivations are founded, Holmes. I don't much like skirting around the edges of the law like this. It is annoying. Let's leave without delay. What have you found in the chest, Holmes? What in there is so precious for these men to commit such terrible acts? The Reverend was telling the truth. Nothing important was locked inside the chest, apart from a few religious items which are hardly worth stealing. So, we haven't made any headway. Perhaps the police will. By the time the police arrive, we shall be a long way from here, Watson. We are leaving. We have crossed London at a breakneck speed. We could have knocked someone over, and naturally I had to pay the cabbie out of my own pocket. Watson, stop complaining. We have to analyze the clues found at the bishop's house. I need something. This fragment of stone is very smooth, and it seems to be of a peculiar quality. I shall have to strip it with one of my products. I can't do that. I can't do that. I can see something. I can't do that. I can't do that. I can see something. I can see something. I can't do that. This stone is granite covered in black paint. I can see something. Black and damp earth under the nail. Interesting. I can see something. I can't do that. I can see something. I can't do that. I can't do that. I can see something. 
I can see something. No, I can't do that. No, I can't do that. Fragments of skin. A phalanx. This finger wasn't cut off. It was ripped off. I can see something. No, I can't do that. I can see something. I can see something. Tooth marks, rather deep ones. I'd say of incisors and a canine. I can see something. I haven't finished my analysis. Bite marks on this severed finger. I am afraid of the significance. The thieves didn't get what they wanted. When they were faced with the bishop's refusal to cooperate, one of the gang shook his finger at him to indicate that he was responsible for his unfortunate state. And the poor man, whose head was the only part of him not bound by ropes, bit the finger violently enough to sever it. An uncommonly savage act. Watson, I am certain that when we have explained the reasons behind this sudden bestiality, we will have revealed a larger part of the mystery. No, I can't do that. I have cut a small piece off the rope. That should be enough. This rope is only worn on one side. I need something. No, I can't do that. A lot of fragments of black stone are wedged into this rope. Their color seems unnatural, but they are too small for me to examine them. These small stones resemble the pieces found in the footprints at the bishop's house. Granite, painted black. I need something. No, I can't do that. Black and damp earth. I can see something. I must compare the samples of earth that I found. There is something written on this scalpel. I should clean it. No, I can't do that. Ah, I can make out WCCH. What do the initials stand for? How many hospitals are there in the Whitechapel area, Watson? If we count public dispensaries, enough to keep us busy for an entire month. Did this scalpel come from a hospital? Yes, as the initials WCCH engraved upon it show us. We must think on how best to deal with this. We do not have the time to investigate every hospital in Whitechapel. I must analyze the clues. I must compare the samples of earth that I found. And if I mixed this earth with another substance, now it must all be stirred. No, I can't do that. The samples of earth taken from beneath the fingernail and from the ropes originate from the same place. How do you know? It took just a little water to analyze the consistency. The soil has retained its moisture, even though there hasn't been rain in London for over a week. This soil could come from the bank of a river, or somewhere where the evaporation is slower. A mine, perhaps, or a trench. The banks of the Thames are clay soil, unlike our samples, so we can rule that out. The nearest mines are a dozen miles away, so I would rule that out also. I would therefore conclude your last theory to be nearer the mark. A trench? A pit. Watson, bring me your register of the London hospitals. Studying the scalpel has given you an idea, then? Indeed. I'll get it.
Read the paper, Holmes. Hospitals and dispensaries in London. I have found my book, Holmes. Good. Now put it on the work table, will you? And this is how my dear friend and colleague treats his client's letters. Female anatomy. Hmm. I should put this book somewhere else. Here is the section showing Whitechapel. I made several notations on these pages during our investigation into the Ripper, which might prove useful. All we need to do is to find a hospital or a public dispensary near a location where pits have been dug and black granite has been used. It's simplicity itself. I haven't finished my analysis. I need something. I can analyze the chemical composition of a substance here. I am missing some information. I haven't finished my analysis. I can analyze the chemical composition of a substance here. I can analyze the chemical composition of a substance here. I can analyze the chemical composition of a substance here. Now I can make the right decision.
the public dispensary number 4661. It's just opposite the Whitechapel Street Cemetery. Yes, Watson. The murderer with the missing finger must work in the cemetery, or at least visit it. He could have taken a rope, one of the type they use to lower the coffins into the graves. The granite is minute particles of tombstone. And he only had to cross the road to steal a scalpel from the dispensary opposite. I can analyze the chemical composition of a substance here. I need something. I can analyze the chemical composition of a substance here. I haven't finished my analysis. Poison, and apparently very virulent. Poison, discreet, efficient, and only detectable via a thorough post-mortem. Have you been able to isolate the active components, Holmes? Not with any certainty. This toxic substance surpasses my own knowledge in the field. It is without doubt the work of an expert chemist. A chemist and a criminal. As you say, please find my monograph on poisoners of the last 30 years. Female anatomy. Hmm. I should put this book somewhere else. And this is how my dear friend and colleague treats his client's letters. General practitioner. That won't be of any use to me.
According to these documents, Hans Schielmann, known as the Rat Killer, was considered the greatest specialist in chemical poison in the world. Is he at liberty? Happily, no. He has been held in the high security wing of London's Westgate prison for many years now. Then he cannot be the one who concocted the poison. Don't dismiss him too quickly, Watson. According to Scotland Yard, the man is exceptionally intelligent. For the greatest criminals, prison is but a mere obstacle. Let's plan a little visit to see Mr. Shieldman tomorrow. Perfect. Well done, Watson. Our board is finished. It confirms that the bishop's murderers work for one person, who, amongst other things, possesses a very sophisticated poison. They therefore act for someone more educated than themselves. You remember Wiggins and his gang, the Baker Street Irregulars? Yes, the street urchins, whom you employ upon occasion, and Wiggins is their leader. Yes. Well, I have hired their services again. I have instructed them to find out the address of the bishop's nephew. I think he's here. Hello, Mr. Holmes. Wiggins, my young friend, have you found the information for which the good Dr. Watson is going to pay you? Yes, Mr. Holmes, it was easy. Very well, I understand. Uh, here are a few pennies. Thanks, Dr. Watson. Uh, the man you're looking for lives near Kensington. Does he live alone? Yes, but he rents a room for an old lady. Did she see you? No, Mr. Holmes. No one saw me. Perfect. What's for his discretion? Here we go again. But of course... I'm falling asleep, Holmes. Aren't you tired? No, I have an exceptional constitution. I can't remember ever having been fatigued by work. Idleness, on the other hand, exhausts me completely. Go to bed, Watson. The night will be short. We leave at dawn. Wow, this is a real adventure. It's exciting. I like it better than made-up stories. I want to know what happens next. Keep reading. I'm going to. Ah, oh, I want to listen to. My readers must excuse me if I do not describe in full detail here the terrible images which haunted me that night. I had a sense that something extraordinary would take place, but I was scarcely prepared for the reality of it. Good morning, Holmes. Did you get any rest? I did not attempt to sleep. Have you managed to come to any conclusions? I think that we might follow three trails. We can visit Whitechapel to try to discover the identity of the murderers by making inquiries at Dispensary 4661 and at the Whitechapel Street Cemetery. The poison trail seems more important to me. We should perhaps go to Westgate Prison first to see Hans Schielman. Yes, and let us not forget the Bishop's irascible nephew, whose address we now have, thanks to my Baker Street Irregulars. I have located each place on our map of London. Holmes, let me remind you that we still have not been officially instructed to investigate this affair. Ah, well, we will just have to hide that small detail. <laughs> <laughs>